recording. Happy Wednesday, February 19th. Who else cannot believe that there's 10 days left in the month? How is this possible? I really don't understand. Um, so I'm really excited. I know several of you are too for our guest speaker this morning. Let's see if I can say your name right, Megan. Megan Mozakowski. All right. Um, as you guys read, oh, okay, we'll put your robe on, dude. As you guys read in our in the graphic that I made and in the announcement in our D page, um, she's also a registered nurse. Works in the ICU. She's a five star diamond. She's got ten diamonds overall. I hope I counted that right. Um, between her different business centers and her husband's account. 2020 Elite Coach, SE10 for 47 months. Pregnant with baby number two, who she just found out was a girl, which I'm so happy for you. Uh, and love her name, by the way. And then um, I'm really excited to hear from her because I know so many of us find places in life and in business where we get stuck. Or we hit goals and then we fall short. Has anyone set a goal I said that wrong. Has anyone set a goal and fallen short and not missed it and not hit it? Oh my gosh, my freaking words this morning. I apologize. Three nights of sleep deprivation is not good on me. Um, and how many of you can resonate with like the discouragement that comes with that? And I see so many, and I've even found myself in certain periods of life where we're like, man, like, am I cut out for this? Like, all of a sudden, doubt starts setting in. Can I do this? And that negative self-talk comes in. So I absolutely love what Megan's going to talk to us about today because she was sharing with me how she, like, a, a switch flipped and she got laser focused and last year advanced eight diamonds to become five-star elite. That is amazing. In the midst of all the things in life, all the busyness that all of us have, she was able to do that. So I can't wait to learn from her today. I'm going to turn it over to you, Megan. Hey, guys. So I know that most of you guys, probably all of you guys don't know me, and I certainly don't know you. So where are you guys from? Just like type in the chat, like what state you're from, where you are in your business, so I can kind of get to know you guys a little bit. Um, and while I'm, while I'm introducing myself, I'll kind of see who you guys are and we'll go from there. But um, I joined about five years ago. I was actually a discount coach for 10 months. I had no idea that Beachbody coaching was even a thing. And when I joined, it was because my coach was actually teaching insanity at my gym. I never even thought that these programs would work. He kind of invited me, not really. I ended up getting my first program on Amazon, which is so embarrassing, but you know. And um, I joined that following February with 21 day fix extreme when that came out as a coach. Um, so for me being added to his team page was kind of really a pivotal thing for me. I feel like if he would have asked like, Hey, do you want to be a part of this Facebook group with all these people that just share positive stuff all the time? I would have been like, hell no. Right. A lot of you guys are from California. That's awesome. I love California. I've only been there twice though. Um, so when I was in this page and just seeing all of this positivity, it took me, cause my coach is, you know, different from me. Like he's, you know, a guy, he's like 10 years older than me. He's a police officer. So like, you know, while we're very close now at the time, like that relatable factor wasn't exactly there. And it kind of took me seeing another nurse on another team posting that she was paying off all this student loan debt that I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like what, what's up with this whole coaching thing? Um, and I was getting great results. I was kind of sharing on social media anyway. So I'm like, I'm just going to try it. And I feel like from the second that I decided to work, which was, you know, the 10 months of being a discount coach, I kind of always did the minimum to have that like baseline success, getting to Emerald, hitting success club every month. Like there's never not been a month where I didn't help someone. Right. But I'm sure you guys can relate to that feeling of like, why is my business not moving at this speed that we see other businesses moving? And quite frankly, I was stuck at one star for like over two years. And it was the most frustrating and debilitating thing I think I've ever gone through in this business because in my mind, I thought I was working hard. I thought I was working so hard and I was telling myself that I was deserving 
don't mind me. I have a, a two-year-old back there. Let me just get him real quick. Come here. What happened? This is real life. <laughs> Um, in my mind, I was doing all of the things and deserved to have all of this stuff that, you know, I wanted. And I think when I got pregnant, it was a really big wake up call because all of a sudden I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do. I couldn't wake up when I wanted to wake up. I was tired all the time. I was really sick. I had, um, a lot of complications in my first trimester and I managed to work through it all. Like I had to, and I'm very type A too. Um, so changing my routine and kind of going with the flow was kind of a big change for me. Um, but that whole phase of like infertility, pregnancy, and then being postpartum, I really woke up and I'm like, you know what? I'm really not, I'm not doing as much as I can, or I wasn't doing as much as I could have. And it was really, you know, flipping that switch and a couple of things had happened. So Number one, when I saw that elite video, not this year, the year prior, it was like the third time that I had watched those. You guys, you see, you've seen those, right? Like where they do like the, the phone calls. The first time I was motivated. The second year I was like motivated, but kind of frustrated. And then the third year that I watched those and not being included, I just candidly like got really angry. Um, and for me, I know that, you know, a lot of our business with personal development is doing affirmations and all that kind of stuff, but I guess I was doing affirmations wrong as like a baseline, but I really used my anger to push me forward in a way that had never pushed me before. Um, I actually had an index card in my office that said, you will never be elite. They are better than you. And I stared at it every single day. Okay. Not your average kind of affirmation, but for me, it worked. Um, so I guess one of my tips would be to, you know, motivate yourself the way that, you know, you can be motivated. Um, so with that being said, I found, I found myself during like, and if any of you have had kids, you know how it is when you're newly postpartum where like life is just insane. Um, and I remember this is when the 2B Mindset came out. I was watching the 2B Mindset videos at like 3 a.m while I was pumping or feeding or doing whatever. I had this in one hand, this in one hand. I had all this stuff all over the place. And I was like getting back to my, like, it was multitasking on steroids. And it was so funny to me because when I looked back, when I was a nurse, yeah, and I had a, a when I had a day off, I was like, I'm accomplishing so much more now. <clears throat> God bless you. Than I ever, that I ever even tried to when I had this abundance of time. So it really was an eye opener that I really wasn't working as hard as I thought I was. And I'm like, I really probably didn't deserve to be elite then, even though I really thought I did. Um, so I really just began working diligently and I stopped focusing on trying to just create new things. I feel like I was one of those coaches that like, I would see a top coach posting like a story template and I'm like, Oh, like I got to try that. Or I would see a coach who, you know, created like a course or a welcome series or any kind of system. And I was trying to just duplicate all of these different things. Cause I'm like, how can I, you know, plug people into something and make my life easier when the problem was I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. Like this business is so simple guys. Right. And this is like the boring part of the call where like, I tell you guys to do the vital behaviors, like every call that we've ever watched or heard. But for me, the difference in like that year of like really going from like zero to 60, I kind of pushed all of the different systems and processes and checklists and graphics and all the stuff that I was so focused on improving to like make myself feel like I was working hard. And I really got down to one-on-one -on -one connections and doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring, which you may hear other coaches say, you know, like, and maybe I'll, I'll rephrase that. In the past, I've heard top coaches say like, you know, I don't give people a one-on-one -on -one until like they hit success club, or I don't do X, Y, and Z until I see X, Y, and Z, where I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just honestly handhold even though I hear some coaches say that, you know, handholding isn't necessarily what's best. 
because I'm like, if I can handhold and give somebody the best experience and really help them one-on-one -on -one with the most basic and simplest things that might be complicated to them that seem simple to me, maybe I can make a difference and maybe that can help them you know, leave the nest or spread their wings and fly, if that makes sense. And I couldn't believe, I think the biggest eye opener with this for me was that I really didn't know my coaches. Like I knew the ones who I was friends with. I knew the ones who I would see who were local to me. But when it came down to like seeing, and on average, I, I hit about like in the beginning, maybe success club 10 to 20. Um, and then, you know, maybe like years two to four, um, success club, like 15 to 30. But I would see people canceling and I wouldn't even know who they were. Like I would know their name and be like, oh, like they signed up in May. But I had, like, I couldn't even remember where they were from. I couldn't remember why they had even joined in the first place. And a lot of these people had never even participated in a group. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm that coach that like is just signing people up, plugging them into a group and just hoping that they do something. And I'm, I really was embarrassed with how my business was. And I'm like, here I am pissed off that I'm not elite. And I don't even know my coaches or my people. I don't want you guys to think that I was like a really crappy coach. I, I did some things good, but I had areas that I needed to improve. And I feel like no, 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 no one could have told me what I was doing wrong. Does that make sense? I feel like we, whenever we feel stuck, we're always looking for that like epiphany or for that like one-on-one -on -one or for that person to tell us like if you just do this or if you just fix it like nobody could have pinpointed that or told me because that was only going on in my world you know what I mean like my upline had no idea that like I could have improved that you know what I mean um so with that being said it was it was great I really got to get to know a lot of my coaches and it was really eye-opening how the simplest things or the things that I felt were the simplest were the things that they were struggling with the most. And I feel like giving that one-on-one -on -one attention and like actually mentoring really changed things a lot. Um, things like posting, helping people with conversations, or just letting somebody know like, hey, like Megan actually cares about me. She actually cares about whether I'm going to show up and, um, it made a difference. And that, you know, um, like Jess said, was the year that, you know, we had eight diamonds pop, which was really exciting. Um, but this is the, you know, the elephant in the room. A lot of my diamonds have fallen off. I'm not even currently a five star right now. And before you think I'm a fraud, <laughs> feel like I'm a fraud. I want you guys to know the honest truth about anybody that you see that has success. Things happen. Just because you see someone hit a gigantic milestone does not mean that they have it forever. Just because somebody is like killing it doesn't mean that they're not going to feel stuck two months from now, right? The difference between anybody who has continual success is that they never give up and that they keep going. Because I feel like the feeling of being stuck is inevitable. Yeah. It's going to continue to happen. And it's not to scare you or make you dread or fear success. But for me, like I, I forget where I was. I think I was at summit when we had like our two star and up workshop, but I heard Kim Fitzpatrick talking about a really horrible situation that she experienced when she either did or almost missed the leap. And I was like, Oh my God, this happens to people like that. Like it made me feel like I didn't suck you know? Um, and then at leadership this past year, I heard Melanie Mitro tell a story that honestly, like I could have nightmares about. And I never thought that things like that happen to coaches like that because they just appear to have things all together. So if you feel stuck, I'm hopefully going to give you three tips that will help. And if you feel like you're crushing it right now, you're going to feel stuck at some point. And I hope these tips help them. So I wrote them down because I knew that I was going to forget things because of this one. Um, so number one, remember why you started and remember why you're doing what you're doing in the first place. Basic, right? And that might change. Like for me, like I was doing it selfishly to just lose weight and look and feel good for my wedding. Um, 
I had no intention on really coaching. And then when I started coaching, I just wanted my products paid for. I never dreamed of, you know, leaving my job or, um, getting my dream house. Like my why evolved as time went on. So remember that reason of why you started, because that's, what's going to help you relate to all of your newer people. And then remembering why you're currently here so that you remember what you're fighting for and why you have to keep going no matter what. It's so important. Um, And whether you remind yourself of the things that you want or the things that you're pushing away from, have that written down, have it plastered wherever you are, whether it's on your refrigerator, on your computer, whether it's on an index card like I made, but have that reminder all of the time so that you know when the going gets tough or you see that crappy message or you see that coach cancellation in your email that you're here for a reason and that you're not going anywhere. My second tip, my God, this is multitasking, is to focus on your personal growth and the impact that you're making and not necessarily dwelling over achievements. So the caveat to this is success club is important moving your business forward is important. Helping your coaches is important. All of the things that we celebrate are important. I'm not telling you to forget about that goal to get to diamond or star diamond or elite, but when you focus only on those things, it makes the business not fun. And when you're not having fun, it, whether you think so or not, it's going to come across in everything that you do, whether it's posting on social media you might have kind of like a sarcastic or negative undertone. If somebody's, you know, kind of being sassy with you in a conversation, you'll probably end up being sassy back. Like if you are not having fun, it is going to infect everything that you were doing. So focus on who you are now compared to who you were when you started. Cause I'm sure, I don't know how long you guys have been coaching. Let me know that too. But Even if you've been a coach for two weeks, I guarantee you, you feel better now than you did then when you started, right? If you've been here a year, like I saw some of you girls talking before we started this call, like you have friendships, like you have something, you, you've benefited from something like you're, you're in this, right? So if you take away all of the shiny stuff that we recognize, think of who you've become since you started. And like, I think, you know, for me, like being stuck and missing goal after goal after goal and just constantly feeling like a failure and constantly feeling like, like, who am I to lead or like, you know, do anything for anyone here. I am beating myself up and I'm like, my income has doubled every single year, right? Like here I am making more money than, you know, some five stars that I know at one star. So you have to focus on what's important. And yes, like being five-star and elite is important. It's awesome. Like I'm not going to say it's not, but changing your circumstances with your income is also really important. There's something to celebrate everywhere. Like there's always something to be proud of, um, to remind yourself that you're doing a good job and that you have purpose. Like your purpose isn't to become a certain star diamond rank, you know? Um, what else was I going to say? There was something else. Oh, and here's the other funny story. So when I got my elite call the week before it happened, do you guys know that like I literally was beating myself up like so much? I was so pissed that I hadn't like exceeded five star because I hit five star. I forget. It was, it was early spring because I hit elite in June, I think. Um, but ha- over half a year had gone by and I'm like, I haven't rank advanced. Like I'm still five star and I literally was beating myself up and I'm like, wait a minute, (laughs) I've been fighting for this damn achievement for like forever. And I finally have it. And I, I'm not happy. Like I was pissed and that's ridiculous. And that's so horrible. So don't ever do that. (laughs) Celebrate your, all of your accomplishments, no matter how small, no matter how big, they're all important. Um, and I even thinking too, like the smallest things. And here's like another really like small example. In the past, I was kind of a reactive person. Like if I got like a sassy message, I would react to it and send something back. Or if I had, you know, a disgruntled somebody, I would always react back. And like now, like I'm such a, I'm like, I'm really good. Like I wait like at least an hour or a day. I respond back professionally. I actually like 
will pray for somebody now before I get angry. Like I've, I'm truly a different person. Right. And like five star didn't do that. It was becoming the person that I needed to be to get to five star, um, which will kind of bring me to my third point is think of the person that you need to become to get to where you're looking to go and stop trying to focus on what you need to do because that was the mistake that literally crippled my business for, I think two years at least, you know? Um, and I think we're all guilty. Like I talked about this, like we, we compare ourselves, right? It's such a natural thing that us women do. And, um, we're always looking for that thing that we can do better when it really is a matter of who we need to become. Um, and for me, like I started, instead of let's just say picking a personal development book that I saw a top coach reading, I would actually look for books that taught leadership or, you know, just, I, I was seeking, like, I was seeking to be better in areas where I knew that I needed improvement. Um, what else can I tell you guys? Um, so yeah, so this year I feel like has not started like with a bang, right? Like I've felt stuck a lot so far, like this January. And I kind of was beating myself up in the beginning of the year. And I was talking to a couple of girls that I just, you know, connect with from other teams. And like, we were all feeling the same way. And like, I forget who started the conversation, but like somebody was like, Megan, like, you know, you have, you know, a kid, you have one on the way, you're home and you're moving now, which is like another cluster. But, um, you know, imagine if you still had to work as a nurse, you would be packing like boxes pregnant after being on your feet for 12 hours in the ICU in the middle of the night, probably not sleeping and going back to work and working like, like we, for, we always forget all of the things that we've earned and all of the things that, you know, we've accomplished when we're focused on those achievements, which, you know, they're important, but they're not everything. Um, I just wanted to see what you guys have said, if anything. Four years. That's awesome. Do any of you guys feel stuck right now or like, where are you right now and where are you looking to go? I would love to know that. And I'm actually shocked my son is still quiet. It's like a miracle. I probably just jinxed it though. I'm going to call people out if you guys don't unmute yourself. Let's make it informal, guys. Oh, I was typing. Sorry. Um, I, Rebecca, I think you're talking, but I did not hear you. I was typing. Sorry. So I'm, <laughs> I'm talking now. Sarah, um, do you want to share anything? I, Is there anything that like I, resonated with you? I've tried so hard like with inviting and like I've had promo codes that have like gone to waste. It's driving me nuts. Can I just not hear her? I can. Oh, I can hear her. That's so weird. Here's you Jess. You just look real It's rude. just me and I <laughs> <laughs> So she was saying that she's struggling with Sorry. inviting and um she feels like she has promo codes that are going to waste. Do you track what your business activities are? Yes, I've been doing that um, with the yeah, okay. business activity tracker. Um, and I only started two months ago. Okay. For the Welcome. second time. So, yeah. I've gotten better with inviting, but I'm still not where I want to be. So I've got to tell you, five years, I still hate inviting, literally hate it. Um, and sometimes I'm still uncomfortable doing it. And it's just one of those things that like I force myself to do. Um, <laughs> and the one book that helped me was Get That Frog and like doing it like first thing in the morning um, and then tracking because, you know, after a while, like, cause I've tried everything, right? Like I've heard coaches say like, I've invited 200 people a day, 60 people a day. And I started doing that because I'm like, well, if they're doing it and having success, like maybe I can do that. And again, like I was that squirrel that would just try to do anything and anything to like move my business forward. But I realized that, you know, out of let's just say 50 people a day or a hundred people a day, people aren't even like responding to me. And I kind of 
tweaked what I was doing, which is probably like my biggest advice in this business is to just constantly pivot, you know, Ross and Rachel insert, but, um, pivot and tweak what you're doing to find what works for you. And for me, like relationship building is like huge. Um, I still invite, I'm not telling you not to invite, but really trying to build relationships and connections and, you know, trying to get to know people about things that have nothing to do with health and fitness has been really big for me being able to invite those people because they feel like they can trust me and they know me a little bit better. But a lot of times too, especially in the beginning, I feel like sometimes you have to consistently work like hard for weeks and months before you really start, you know, seeing the fruits of your labor, right? Cause you're planting seeds, not plants. Um, so just stick with it. You have a great team and upline. And I'm sure if you continue working the way that you are, you're going to see success. So Naomi has hit diamond like five times and lost it right before the six weeks. Um, Naomi, are you losing it because you have coaches going inactive? Yeah. Um, because you have emeralds losing their emeralds? It's mostly because I've like always built it off of like discount coaches. So they go like inactive. Like one time it was like the day before I was getting hit by six weeks. Okay. How often do you to talk about coaching on social media? Like never. <laughs> so for me, when I started, I had the hardest time getting people to accept trying Chicology. Nobody wanted to try it. And I think my coach was like, well, you never talk about it or show it. So like, why would anybody want to try something that you don't even talk about? Right. And then the same thing happened when I got good at challenge packs. I was good at Chicology. I'm good at challenge packs, but nobody wanted to sign up as a coach. And it's because I wasn't talking about being a discount coach or like I wasn't sharing that piece because I was so afraid of what people would think because I'm like oh like, people are gonna think that I'm in the like network marketing and like once I started sharing it like on my terms the way that it was unfolding for me everything started to change and then I feel like if you start doing that that's gonna be huge but also I learned that whenever I ask somebody like hey do you want to be a coach it makes people run away where if I have a discount coach who signs up and I know that they like their Shakeology or the performance line, it's so much easier to be like, hey, would you ever want to get your Shakeology cheaper? Because then they're intrigued. They want to know how. And then you can talk about it like very casually without making them think that they have to be like a working coach with like all these trackers and like, you know what I mean? Or with even out, with, without even posting sometimes. You know, like you can almost have like a discount emerald, if that makes sense. Um, but just a couple of things to try. Um, and then I would say too, if you have people going inactive frequently, we can't prevent everybody from going inactive, right? Like some people, it's just going to happen. But maybe trying to go that extra mile and making sure that they are loving it. And if they're not, maybe switching them to the, to the performance line or maybe, you know, focus greens, power greens and collagen or just something different to keep them active so that you can kind of move the needle forward if that makes sense. Okay. So JC, if you want to hit diamond, where are you at now? Like, what do you need? And how long have you been coaching? Can you hear me? Yes. You guys can hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I've hit Emerald, and everybody that I sign up, they all quit on me. So I'm not even an Emerald right now, am I, Jess? I don't, Do I'm not sure off the top of my head. I don't think Do you I'm have not. your own group or way of communicating with your people? Or are you, like, in your, like, team challenge group? Um, I'm actually just was gonna start on my own this week, I think, um, trying to recruit people. I have a really crappy phone, so I don't think you, um, you guys hear me very well. Can you guys? I can hear you. Um, so if you're working in like your team's challenge group, I would do something where. Yeah. So I kind of took a little. I feel like you were talking and then but you weren't. Hi. Go ahead and talk. My phone's back. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say have maybe like a message pod where you can talk to your girls 
this way you can kind of gauge like what's going on with them. Cause sometimes, um, and here's another thing too, if let's just say I sign somebody up right now for a March 1st challenge group, or let's say, let's just say hypothetically 10 rounds is coming out on March 1st. And I have somebody that joins now. I was shocked to know how many people don't even open their package until like the day of the challenge group. So what happens? They get their package tomorrow on February 20th and 10 days go by, 20 days go by. And then what happens when they get that email or they realize that they're going to, you know, reorder for their Shakeology, they cancel or they go inactive because they don't need it because they didn't start yet. So I kind of make it a point that when somebody signs up, like I write down everybody's name that, you know, they're signing up in let's just say February. And I'm literally reaching out to them like nonstop to make sure that they're opening that, that bag. They're trying Shakeology. And this is kind of like that trial experiment period. So that when the program or the challenge group starts, like they're good to go. They know what they're doing. They know what they like. So that when they do need to renew, um, they need it. And they want to stay on it because they're feeling that benefit because, you know, two weeks is, you know, what I think, you know, for somebody to really feel and see the benefits of it. Um, but having that relationship, that closer relationship with your people. And I think that that's the advantage of, you know, being new and not having necessarily a huge team because you can really, you know, create those meaningful relationships with people and really help personalize their journey. Right. Like we can, I guarantee you that most of the people that you've signed up have no idea that there's a bod or a Shakeology channel on bod or that there's a Shakeology YouTube channel. Like people don't go out there and explore all of the resources that we have. And it really can take a matter of seconds to just kind of let somebody know that you care and send them something like, Hey, I was thinking of you, like, here's this recipe, something to try. Um, but those are just some of the things that I try to do to kind of get my people engaged in the first, you know, couple of weeks. I can share a little bit for JC because uh, JC, we could hear you. Uh oh, no, I think you're frozen. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, she had actually just reached out to me because we currently run, most of us run a collective challenge group together and we all equally post and have different responsibilities. Um, but JC's really recognizing in herself that she needs the independence in order to grow, which is amazing. And I love that. So she's going to be running her own challenge groups. Um, in March and April. So that's kind of where she's branching off. I, th I think she signed up three people since becoming a coach, but she's still newer too. And so um, with like minimal social media and so for, and most of our team's pretty new for the most part. And so we're kind of in, we've had um, Alexis Doss and Z Slingsby came, were our guest speakers before this month. And it was, it's so awesome because everyone is focusing on relationship building. And I think that's such a key element that we miss and we go straight into, for a new coach to go straight into cold inviting can be so discouraging. You have no social media presence. People have no idea who you are. They don't know your face. They don't know why this is impacting your life or how it can impact theirs. And so going straight into cold inviting can be really discouraging. Um, so that's kind of like the dynamic of our doing. <laughs> the dynamic of our team in a sense for the most part. Not everybody's brand new, but um, we do have a lot of people who are newer who are pushing for diamond or pushing to grow a spouse's account to diamond to hit star diamond for the first time. Um, so yeah, that's kind of Mommy. the team. That's awesome. And the fact that you guys are on a call, like that's everything. And I wish I did that sooner. Like, honestly, like to have that sense of community to hear from different people, the ability to ask people questions, like it really, oh my God, it really will help your business move forward. Um, and just a quick story too. Um, this is like totally informal now. Um, there were so many instances where I was trying to work my cold market because I was uncomfortable talking to people that I knew. And I had my cousin sign up on the website. I hadn't seen her in like 10 years, but like we were friends on like social media. But like, why didn't I invite her? Like, like what was going to happen even if she said no, right? Like, but she signed up on the damn website and I couldn't even get credit for it because she did it like two months before telling me. Um, I remember my mom telling me like, Hey, like this stuff you're posting about all the time. Like, why haven't, like, why haven't you given me any, you know? Um, and it's just so funny that we're so afraid to talk to people. And those are the people that are going to say yes, or those are the people that are going to ask questions and be interested. So I think we all have those people in our life that we're uncomfortable 
talking to. Um, and another batch of people were girls at work. Cause I'm like, Oh, this is work. And like, then they're going to judge me and talk behind my back. And what if they say no? What if they know that I fail? And I had girls come up to me like on from night shift. Cause I work days and they're like, Oh yeah, that hammer and chisel program that you've been posting about. Like I'm on week three. It's amazing. And I'm like, these are all the things that would happen to me. So guys, like literally write that list, that memory jogger. Everybody knows at least a hundred people, right? Just start inviting. You're planting seeds. And especially to get to diamond, like that's what you have to do. You have to be relentless in inviting and conversations. Come here, come sit on my lap. You can't cry. This is not good. But it's all good. My two year old's playing with a screwdriver that he somehow found no. somehow in my desk. So this is safe. So you're in good company. Yeah. <laughs> this is a I good think that's, to be on. Yeah, this is no. perfect. Um, I think okay. it's so key what you said. Like I think there's two parts to it. Like your, our mindset, for example, like a goal like Diamond or Star Diamond where you're growing a spouse account to Diamond. So much of it is about your mindset. If you make it super hard and complicated and overwhelming, it always will be. And no. in your mind, if you make it simple, it's 12 people. I could find 12 people who who need some side income even, you know, or who yeah. love Shakeology okay. and like a discount okay. and who like to shop at TJ Maxx and Ross. Like, I, I know 12 people who would like that. And um, nice. that mindset, I feel like, has to be there. And then the action, you're absolutely right, has to be behind it of doing things like the memory jogger for all of you um who don't know that's in our level up group dude let's not play with the screwdriver it's not safe there we go um but i also wanted to say too and maybe you can touch on this really quick because a lot of our coaches right now i just i did a question like what's the biggest thing holding you back from success club and 99 percent of them were dealing which i had no idea I love what you said that sometimes the simplest things you didn't realize your coaches are struggling with, but um, a lot of people are struggling with price objections, and I never get them. And so I, we've kind of been talking through that. I'd love to hear your perspective on price objections, um, but I also think a huge thing with the invite, if we are thinking selfishly, like I'm sending them this in invite so I can hit Success Club, that's always the, the wrong way to do it. But if you're sending an invite, like, I know that they need this, like this could change their life. It's a gift that I'm offering. The objections don't mean as much, like they don't, they kind of just roll off their back, off your back because you know they're just not ready for it. But um, anyways, I'd love to hear if you have any tips for us. Yeah, to totally. Um, and I, I still get them, I don't get them as much. And I would say there's a couple of things. So if you feel icky inviting someone, odds are it's going to be icky. So you have to feel good. I mean, you might be uncomfortable, but you have to feel good about what you're inviting to. You have to feel good about what you're doing. And you have to have unwavering belief that like beach body is the, you know what, right? Cause without those things, like, I, I don't even know what you would be inviting to, you know, or why. Um, the other thing I think you need to invite the way that you talk. I feel like in the beginning, oh my God, I would, I would see messages because I would circle back if I saw somebody like engaging on my posts and I would write them like this block of like, Hey, like, do you know, Beachbody is the creators of Vina DX and Insanity. Like, do you want to be a part of my challenge group? And I'm like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. But now when I invite somebody, I'm like, oh my God, like I literally type the way that I talk and I get into voice message more than anything now because I want somebody to hear me. I want somebody to feel like I'm literally in front of them talking about how the office is the best TV show on the face of the earth. But like, I talk about that the same way that I talk about Beachbody. So think of whatever it is that you're obsessed with, whether it's Disney or Corgis or knitting or your favorite TV show. And you need to have that enthusiasm and that unwavering belief that it's like the, you know what, um, whenever somebody's giving you objections, that right there is golden content start posting about it. Don't call that person out and maybe don't do it like five minutes after you get that objection, but you can creatively use that objection in your post. So like for me, I would talk about how, you know, oh my goodness, for like, and for me too, like when I got DVDs, guys, I don't even know if you know this, but the Insanity Max 30 DVDs only were like 230 or $270. Like what? And like everything that you get now, like, so I think this is dirt cheap. 
I think this should be like 10 times more expensive than it is, but that's what I believe. And I think that that comes across when I talk to people. Also, I'll relate in my posts, maybe what I used to pay for my gym membership, which was $75 a month. I would go there maybe once a week and I had no results. And I actually do like a side by side of like my before photo and like, I'll do like, you know, before going to the gym for an hour at a time versus, you know, 30 minute workouts for what I would spend for two months of the, of the gym. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like when you talk about objections publicly and do this with all the objections with coaching, like the whole pyramid scheme thing, I talk about everything because I feel like that builds trust. It answers questions. And then a lot of times when people are talking to you, they're like, if they've heard you say that and they're still talking to you, they obviously trust and believe what you're saying, right? Like they're not going to throw out the objection that you just posted about last night, you know? Um, and then I feel like when I'm in the conversation and let's just say it's happening to me, I like to ask a lot of questions. So if somebody says to me, $160, that's really expensive. I might say to them like, well, what is this worth to you? And I will literally let people like, I'll make somebody spin <laughs> until they're like, you know, until I, I can really ha like get to the bottom of what it is that's going on. Because a lot of times it has nothing to do with the price. And a lot of times it has to do with them believing that they're actually going to do it or them believing that it's going to work. But a lot of times we just say like, oh, that's expensive. I can't afford it because that seems to be like the easy way out. Just like, I don't know if you guys have ever been involved by you. If like people sell like hand lotions, I'm always like, no. And like, it could be gold. And I'm like, just get away from me. Um, but it's like a knee jerk reaction, you know? Um, so the other thing that I'll do, if somebody says, you know, it's really expensive, I'll say to them, do you have a budget that you're looking to work within? Because the person who says, um, you know, I can only spend a hundred dollars. That tells me that that person actually has a budget. That tells me that they really truly cannot spend $160. But the person who ghosts you, the person who says, I don't know, or the person who gives you like the BS answer, it's not money. It's not money. Cause I've had people who tell me that this is too expensive. And then I see them go and get a BMW a week later, or I'll see them go buy a new pair of shoes that like, they're only going to wear once. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, money is not the issue. And then the, the, the thing that I hear from my coaches too, sorry to like keep going on about this. Um, a lot of my coaches will be like, you know, I really want to invite this person, but I don't want to be pushy because I know that they may not like, they can't afford it. Like they have a lot going on and I don't want to be that person that like expects them to like buy something. And they truly feel like concerned and like guilty about it. And my response to them, and this is just my story, and if this isn't you, you might not necessarily relate to it, but when I joined, my coach didn't really know me personally that well, and it's not like I aired out my dirty laundry, but I had like $20,000 in credit card debt. I had over $40,000 in student loan debt. I was working overtime out the wazoo. I had a credit score in the 500s. I was declined to be on my mortgage. I couldn't even lease my car without having my husband co-sign. Like I was broke. I was literally broke, sad, and sorry. Um, and we were getting married and I had put all of like our vendors and everything on my credit card. Like I, we had to pay for everything ourselves. And um, my coach just said like, this is the challenge pack. You should do this. It's great. He was credible. He had great results. And I wanted to do it. And I figured out a way. I found whatever <laughs> space on my credit card I had and I made it work. However, if he would have recommended, like why don't you just get a bod trial? I would have had limited access. I probably would have treated it like anything else that I got for free or cheap. I probably would have hit, and this is at the time when BOD had like premium programs that you had to pay for and unlock and like only the older ones were included. So I'm just thinking like at that time, I probably wouldn't have loved anything because I was obsessed with Max 30. Um, and I didn't even really like 21 Day Fix. But um, if that was what he did because he prejudged me, I probably would have fallen off. I probably wouldn't have upgraded to coach and I would probably still be working this sad old life that I had, had he not just said, this is what's going to work. So that's how I am. You know, I let people decide somebody's going to tell me no, if they can't afford it or if they don't want to do it, but I never want to cheapen the value or cheapen the possibility or opportunity that somebody can have when I'm just offering it right? Like that would almost be like, and again, like I've gone through infertility, but like if somebody said to me, like, you know, you can't conceive on your own, 
So we would offer IVF, but since we don't think you can afford that, here's a bunch of ovulation strips. Like what good are you doing anybody? You know what I mean? So just go with what you believe in your heart and just speak that belief and like get passionate when you're talking to people because people feed off of that, you know? Sending a scripted invite is so different than like getting on a voice message. And like literally stopping somebody dead in their tracks because they're going to be like, what the hell did that girl drink today? And I want to feel like that. And it's a huge difference. (laughs) I love it. so much. Nikki, go. Sorry, I can't hear. I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Wait, I just heard her though. So weird. So good though. Thank you so much. That was a lot of gold in that. Yeah. So I appreciate you taking time for that. Anytime. I have a question. Go for it. So I've been struggling with finding a balance between um, building relationships and inviting. So before I was just like inviting, inviting like crazy, and I couldn't even hit success club. Like I haven't hit success club. And so I was like, well... I listened to Z's call and I was like, I'm going to start doing this like peeps to peep thing. And I started doing it for a few days and like trying to just like build relationships basically with women. And then I just got frozen like the last week and a half of like being scared to invite now because I feel like I'm not getting a whole lot of responses in my relationship like conversations. And now I feel like I'm afraid to invite. How many people on average watch your Instagram stories a day? Um, normally it's like the same 80 people and I'm normally inviting like maybe 60 of them. I don't normally do the men. So oh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't either. Um, so usually what I'll do is, cause this is hard, right? And if you start a conversation with somebody about Disney, you're not going to like five minutes later be like, Hey, do you want to join my challenge group on March 1st? Right. But yeah. I try to engage with them, have the conversation, but if they're engaging back with me, then I'll like a couple of their photos, I'll, you know, comment on a couple of things and then follow them. So it's not weird because I feel like it looks weird when you're like, 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 comment, 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 follow, message. It's almost like that person's going to smell that you're trying to like do that, you know? So I'll try to have that organic conversation of like, hey, I'm planning a Disney trip next month. I saw that you stayed here. How'd you like it? Blah, blah, blah. If they respond and I can have a little bit of a convo, then I'll go to their page because then it just seems natural. And then the hope, not a guarantee that they follow me back and maybe start checking me out. But when I see people that are new watching my stories because I'm, you know, authentically going out there and trying to build connections, I will invite that person, even if it's like a week later, because guess what? You're watching my stories. I'm talking about Beachbody all day and all night, you know? So to me, it's a lukewarm invite. It's not a cold invite and it's not you know? Um, but I feel like you have to kind of do all of the things consistently for that wheel to spin properly, you know, because if you're doing all conversations and no inviting, that's not really going to move the needle forward. And if you're inviting without building any relationships, that's not going to move the needle forward. So you may just have to tweak things a little bit and experiment, but like, give it time, be patient, like give yourself a couple of weeks of doing a routine before you can truly say like, this is working and this is not. Um, cause so quickly, like, well, you know, I'm going to invite 30 people a day and then it's like, nobody signs up tomorrow. And then you stop doing that. And it's like, well, if you would have been with any routine that you're doing, you know, um, but definitely have a combination or the consistency of, you know, invites and conversations. And hopefully that will pan out if that helps at all. Yeah. So you were saying like from your stories, you're then like going to their page and liking and commenting and then you're um, like starting conversations or are you watching my story? So like, let's just say I do um, a couple of stories talking about my challenge group, right? I'll go to my story views. And if I see that somebody watched, like I'll go to, let's just say the fourth story about the challenge group, because that means anybody on that fourth story actually watched them all and actually cared. Anybody who's there, I'll just invite them. You know, if they're watching, they're lukewarm market. They're not cold. They already know you. They already care about what you're doing. They're interested in what you have to say, right? Um, So those are people that I will just invite. Where if I'm, let's just say, focusing on building connections right now, I might, you know, 
I'm 15 months pregnant or almost, I might go to like the 15 months pregnant hashtag and try to like meet new women who are pregnant. So they're separated, but I'm working all of those pieces during my power hour, if that makes sense. Okay, that helps. Thank you. I think that's so awesome. And oh shoot, Sarah, are you talking and now I can't hear you? What is happening? Um, I will be quiet. I promise. Um, I just think what you're saying was so powerful because where does the fear come in? When you're afraid to invite someone, usually we're afraid because we're we're afraid that they're gonna think that we're just trying to get something from them or just trying to scam them or that we were just trying to make a relationship for them with them to sell them something. And if that's truly your mindset that I'm only making connections with people in order to get them to buy something from me, that will be communicated. And that's, it's going to feel like Megan was saying, it's going to feel icky, but this is like Zootopia over here. Um, but if you intentionally switch your mindset that, I genuinely care about this person. I genuinely want to get to know them and I genuinely want to invite them because I genuinely think this could change their life. Then it kind of removes, like for me, it completely removes that fear because I'm not trying to trick them. I'm genuinely trying to give to them and I'm excited that this could change their life and it just changes everything. So if you guys are feeling fearful of something, maybe check like genuinely am I really trying to like trick them into something? Do I really feel like I have something that I'm excited to offer them? Cause I feel like that's a game changer. Sorry, Sarah. And here's one more example too, before you go. Um, cause I'll forget it. Cause my brain just doesn't work anymore. Um, somebody like how many of you guys probably not often, but when somebody offers you dessert at a restaurant, how many of you guys have ever said no or no, thank you. Like I'll just take the check. I'm full. Do you think that waiter like quit? <laughs> I just gave up on his job. No, like he's not taking that personally. You just don't want dessert and that's okay. And I feel like you have to literally compare this to any other job and just know that like this isn't for everyone period, right? And it's not for everyone right now, but planting those seeds, they might watch and want to know what you're doing and come around later. But yeah, sorry, Sarah. <laughs> I, I want to piggyback on that too. Just the fact that we you're planting the seeds, Salisha, and also, like, don't just go dark. Still, still connect with them about something else. Like, show that you weren't just in it for the prize for you. You know, like that you truly, genuinely thought it would help. If not, you're gonna stick around. You comment, and then they'll see, like, oh, that person is a. You are a nice person. <laughs> you do care. You share about your church. You share things for me, right? So it's because you just, you, you have that knowledge and you think that I can benefit from it. So it's the same thing. I think we get in our heads and then if we're trying to get to a goal, we get so focused on the goal and then we get frustrated, but you need to remember you're planting a seed and they might come around months and months later. So that's something that we learned from almost every coach that people say, oh, I was watching you six months, eight months, a year, whatever. So just continue forward. Now, Sarah, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. So I wanted to ask you, Megan, because I am di a diamond and I've been sitting at diamond and kind of sitting here for what, like two years now, just, I don't remember a really long time. And I've had those, I've had that moment like you were, when you were talking about elite and watching the video and like being inspired. For me, it's like it's at Summit, like premiere, and like watching, you know, everybody sitting down on the floor and being up in like <clears throat> the nosebleeds. And I'm like, I've had that moment. I'm like, okay, I'm motivated and I'm inspired and I'm excited about this. And then like the next year, it's like, okay, I'm a little discouraged and a little unmotivated, but I still, you know, I want to do this. And I haven't gotten to that mindset, mindset, excuse me, <laughs> shift yet where um where i'm really going all in like where like i'm still stuck in that place where i have the time like you like you before i quit my job i'm at home i have kids but you know they're in school and so i have this time and i'm not maximizing it and there's something that's blocking me and holding me back from actually doing the work and really going all in and trying to unlock that. so any thoughts that you have <laughs> 
do you think it's a matter of the amount of work that you're putting in or do you think that it's the quality of work that you're putting in? I think it's probably the amount of work and also the tasks that I'm doing. I'm like, I'm an expert. Sorry, my kids are loud. I am an expert at finding things to take up my time, like you were talking about, and not doing the inviting and the relationship building. Why do you want to succeed? Like, what would being a star diamond or premier, like, meet, like, what, how would that change your life? For me, that would mean that my business is moving forward and growing and that my husband doesn't have to work as much overtime. Right now, he works 60 hours a week, typically. Okay. He's, always, he's always gone. Um, so, and so, I think, so for me, when I had him, I was like, I will be damned if I ever have to go back there ever again. And that's a very strong statement, but that why was like, I will literally die <laughs> if I have to go back. And I think having a really strong why is huge. So like, you know, I'm sure you care about your husband deeply, but ha like, is that why strong enough? You know, I don't know. Only you know that, you know, but I feel like, you know, for me, I became so much more diligent with my time when I had more to lose and when I had so much to gain at the same time, or I feel like when I was already working or when I was new and I was kind of getting to diamond, like I never even thought that like I would be one of those people who would like go home. So like, maybe that's why I didn't work hard enough because like I had no, like, I don't know. But I feel like when things got like really serious and I, my goals and my why just really evolved, my work ethic changed like big time. Um, so I don't know if you need something stronger to push, you know, towards or pull away from, but in terms of having the, the discipline or the determination to put the work in, I think your why needs to be strong for sure. Cause like nobody needs basically to basically like, get knocked up. Up. <laughs> Sorry. Not my Sorry. <laughs> this is telling me I need to have a baby. I have not had another baby. <laughs> <laughs> I am too old for that. <laughs> I think that's so spot on though. Like, and we've talked about this on our team recently. Um, and I share this on your team call too, Megan, like high necessity. It's so, if you really want to go big places in, in this business, which not everybody does, but if you really want to, I think that has to be, it has to be there. Finding a way to need it. And here's the thing too, like, do you guys honestly think I'm going to invite right now with this? Like, there's no way, there's no way. Um, this is hard to work with, right? So every day I literally am up at 4:20 in the morning. I do my workout. I meet with all of my girls at 5 a.m. And then I start working. Um, I do everything, like the important stuff when he's asleep. Because as the day goes on, I become less happy and enthused about being here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's a lot easier for me to like do my team check-in and my challenge group at eight o'clock at night when my husband gets home because that's enjoyable. That's fun. That's easy. Like I can do that half asleep but I can't invite or respond to objections after a day of toddlering. You know what I mean? So maybe change your day, maybe wake up earlier, maybe get the big important stuff done first. Um, so that you know that you're good like for the day. And if you have to do a load of laundry or get sidetracked, it's okay because you did your inviting and your business and in income building activities, you know? <sighs> recently who's that I'm hearing about is like oh I wake up at 4 a.m too <laughs> we did that we did that for a while and I was like oh Megan our mean? team calls yeah. our team calls used to be at 4 30 in the morning I know I don't know how I kept people but they showed up <laughs> I would Here's probably have better participation. That's actually a really good idea. Well, I used to think like no one has a conflicting appointment at 4 30 in the morning. Yeah. It's really desired. Love it. 
Oh my gosh. Wow. All right. Well, we are out of time. Megan, this was so great for everyone. I know. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Them. Thank um, you. If anyone's watching the recording no, or if no, you guys no, have no, um, no, questions no. that come up, I'm no. sure Megan wouldn't mind if you message them to me. I can shoot them over to totally. her. And we'll go from there. But last 10 days of the month, I think this was such good fire to remember like anything is possible in 10 days. So I hope everyone's goals are up at SC10 at least because so much can happen at the end of the month. So please do not give up. I'm pushing with you. I'm going to be out of town, but I'm still pushing with you guys. And I know together we can do this. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.